In this presentation, I'm going to tell you more about computer-assisted telephone interviewing, or CATI, surveys to collect food security data and disseminate information. First, here's a small recap of what we learned in the previous lessons. Computer-assisted telephone interviews, CATI surveys, which we also refer to simply as live calls, are calls conducted by call centre operators. These operators call people on their mobile phones and ask them questions about their households or their community's food security situation. Operators are provided with a script to follow during the call and with a data entry tool where they record the respondents' answers. But what are the advantages of CATI-based surveys? As with the other remote monitoring tools, CATI allows you to collect data much quicker than face-to-face -face surveys and there's no need to deploy staff in the field. CATI also has a number of advantages compared to the other remote data collection tools, SMS and IBR. As mentioned earlier in the course, live calls give a higher response rate than SMS and IVR, literacy levels of the survey population are not an issue. With CATI, call centre operators can establish a relationship with the respondents and make them feel more at ease. In some cultures, where verbal communication is more accepted than texting, CATI surveys have a big advantage over the other tools. Additionally, during CATI surveys, operators can rephrase or clarify questions. This allows you to ask more detailed questions, and as a consequence, CATI allows you to collect slightly more complex indicators than SMS and IVR. We will now look at different options for setting up a CATI system. First, you have to decide where it will be hosted. You could host it in-house. This means that the process is managed by your office and it also hosts the call center. Alternatively, you can outsource your surveys. This means that an external professional call center manages the process. As explained in the third MVAM decision tree, the things to take into consideration when deciding which deployment to go for are, firstly, think about the volume of the sample. How many phone numbers do you plan to call in a given time? We recommend an external call center if volumes are high. Then, consider the availability of phone numbers. We recommend an external call center if you do not already have a phone number database or if collecting an adequate amount of phone numbers would be difficult. Finally, think about whether your office has the necessary space, a quiet room where you can host the call center, and the capacity to conduct trainings, supervisions, and manage phone operators. If not, it's better to outsource. Now we'll look in more depth about how in-house and outsourced CATI deployments work. First, let's look at in-house CATI deployments. If you go for an in-house CATI deployment, you need to set up a call center in your office. Usually for MVAM projects, there are two phone operators employed in the call center. So we normally get a small sample size. Phone operators will reach respondents in your already existing phone numbers database. Data is then entered by the operators in a data entry tool. The requirements for an in-house CATI deployment are a quiet room and desks to host operators, phones, either mobile or desk phones, headsets with noise cancelling technology, a PC for each operator with the script and data entry tool, and supervision and standard operating procedures. You can find more information on setting up in-house CATI deployments in the document Setting up and managing an in-house call centre. Standard operating procedures and terms of references for call centre operators are also provided. For outsourced CATI deployments, the call centre will be hosted externally. As explained earlier in the course, if conditions allow, this is the recommended solution. Depending on your target sample, the call center will dedicate a certain number of phone operators to your activities. The phone operators will reach out to respondents via random digit dialing phone numbers, phone numbers already collected in your partner's database, or, if available, the phone numbers your office already has. Data collected during the phone calls is entered by the operators in a data entry tool. At the end of the survey, anonymized data is transferred to you in a safe and secure way. 
When outsourcing CATI, it is very important that the contract with the partner ensures data confidentiality and establishes that no sharing of personally identifiable information will happen between the parties. When using an external commercial call centre, choosing the right partner is crucial. The document, Scoping Out a Commercial Call Centre, provides guidance on how to select them. CATI surveys have some limitations compared to SMS and IVR. There are lower turnaround rates and higher costs than the other remote data collection tools. The data entry is also not automated. However, despite these limitations, of the three main data collection tools, they offer the best data quality. This is mainly due to the fact that operators can establish a conversation with respondents, answer their questions, and clarify the meaning of some terminology they may not understand. This results in less errors related to question comprehension. You can also expect less typos from trained operators than from respondents themselves. Nevertheless, to maximise data quality, it's critical to routinely train phone operators and check for operator bias after each round. Providing training to phone operators is critical to reduce measurement errors, defined as the difference between the value provided by the respondent and the true value, and reduce phone operator bias, a bias originating from unintentional operator behaviours. This could be an incorrect interpretation of respondent answers or manner of posing questions by the operators. A more in-depth data quality discussion and explanations on how to minimise errors and bias can be found in Lesson 9, Data Management and Analysis. To maximise data quality, MVAM organises periodic trainings both at in-house and external call centres. These trainings usually include an overview of the organisation and the goals of the survey, in the case of MVAM an overview of WFP and the MVAM project itself the reasons why specific questions are included and how they should be asked, an explanation of the terminology used throughout the questionnaire, a cheat sheet can be provided to the operators. There's normally a discussion on how to reply to difficult questions that respondents may ask operators. A sheet with standard answers should be provided. They also include the expected behaviour during the phone calls, how to enter data in the data entry tool, and how to manage phone numbers and subdivide calls between operators. Thank you for watching this introduction to CATI surveys. You'll learn more on CATI surveys later on in the lesson.